Howdy everybody, Andy Nolch here, the Space Cowboy, with another KR, and this one is probably going to be my best KR ever. Get excited, this is about the tech changes in Scientology, and I've actually got the evidence, and I've got the proof, in case anyone out there doesn't believe me about what I'm saying when I say that the church has changed uh, materials out of the books and intentionally put in confusing words. So... I've got an old copy here and I've got the new copy and then I've got over here on my laptop I've got um, some of the originals and then I've got the uh, the new basic books so I'm going to go through it it's going to be a thorough video and I'm going to show you exactly what's going on now first one I'm going to do which is very simple I'll take out this one because it's just easy to take it out it's a Dianetics book. Now, this one's had the least changes made because um, I guess Hubbard couldn't get away with changing it. Because I mean, sorry, I guess Miss Cabbage or RTC couldn't get away with changing it because um, everyone knows that Hubbard specifically s sat down for like six weeks and penned the whole thing out. So he can't he can't use the excuse of a the person who was doing dictating stuffed it up and stuff. So this one has the least amount of scrolling. But what it does have, when I noticed it when I was studying it in the church, is that they've got, um, it's a lot bigger because they do these things where they add in their own glossaries with someone's idea of what the definitions of the words are. Okay, and it can sometimes be handy, but it's kind of like, you know, did Hubbard approve of that? Like when he released the original Dianetics and the Dianetics they were using in the 70s and even the 80s or whatever, I don't think it had a massive glossary like this it just it required that the person actually use study tech and looked them up in a proper dictionary and worked out what word fitted in the context and then had like you know then you cleared the word so you you don't just do this cheat way of just going to the glossary and looking the words up which is questionable um but you can sort of argue like hey it's kind of is easier if it's just a little silly word that that you just don't know what it means, and you're like, oh, googly buck, oh, it just means blah, 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 and you're like, oh, okay. So I'm not, I'm not fully criticizing the whole glossary thing, but they do seem to in the church have taken the glossary thing pretty far. Um, but what I noticed was that if someone, whoever came up with these definitions in the glossary, if they um, made a mistake, then it really messes with your knowledge. Because I remember studying this and reading it right and going, yeah, that makes sense, and then checking a word in the back and their definition of the word in the back here I actually think was wrong and so I remember reading their definition over and over again and reading this book and going hold on a second this sentence this thing that Hubbard wrote makes sense but if you apply their definition to it it doesn't make sense so you have that tricky problem in that you don't have Einstein's or Hubbard's writing these glossaries and they can make mistakes in the definitions of thingos, so somebody, some poor person of Div 6, who isn't extremely bright, just reads it and goes, hm, hm, and it's, hm, and reads it, the definition goes, hm, and then reads it and goes, hm, and goes, hm, and goes, oh, I think I understand, then moves on and thinks, oh, Scientology is not that good. Um, so that was a, a bad thing. I only noticed it in one definition, but it, I'm sure they probably made it with more, but it's just, it's something that's not quite right. All right, now, here's the big one. It's this book here um, called New Slant on Life because this one's been really screwed massively. And I like this book a lot. This is one of the, f this, both these books I read, I think, in the first year I got into Scientology and I really liked them because um, they're quite different, these books, even though they've got the same title. Um, but they've got great, simple data and they're fantastic. Now, um, I actually, I came along after they've introduced all these new fancy books, right? Um, but in my first year that I got involved with Scientology, I found one of these. I was just looking in a secondhand bookshop. I found one of these old versions, right? And I bought it and I read it and I liked it. So I had a, I had a favorable opinion of the older tech like I didn't think or oh, because I'd read this one and then I read this one I, I didn't think that the old versions were just these crappier versions like I was aware that when I read 
this one, I was like, well, this one had some cooler chapters in it that are missing. And I was like, why'd they get rid of some of these cool chapters and stuff? And so it was just a little out point. I didn't think any of it, anything of it at the time, because this was when I was just in, was in my first year of getting into Scientology. But um, when I first joined the independent Scientology movement, it was because I saw a video by Ada Thomas um, mentioning the tech changes in the basic books. And so, of course, as soon as I saw that video or that title, I was open to listening to it because I was aware that this book had already been messed with. So um, I listened to her speak and uh, I saw what she was saying and I was like, whoa, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Why the hell are they messing up his tech and why are they taking out chapters and stuff? And it sent me, that, that was it. It wasn't watching videos by Chris Shelton saying Scientologists are crazy and it's a cult and, and, and like this, this crap that they say, oh, Scientology shouldn't have tax exemption and Scientology is the most evilest thing ever. And like, it wasn't by any of the Scientology haters because a lot of them just hate Scientology so much and they exaggerate how they hate Scientology. So it makes you, um, it puts you off from listening to it because you're like, you know Scientology is good, you know the information is good, so you think the person's talking shit. So Chris Shelton, if you want to wake people up, do something like this. This will get them out of the church, actually showing them the tech changes because they'll realize that the church has fallen into bad hands. All right, now, so with this book here, um, the first big change of this is that whole chapters are missing. Like in this old one here, it's got some great interesting chapters in it and stuff, and this one doesn't have them. And what it has instead is to fill in the space, it has again the big glossary thing, and it also has more pictures, which it's, this other one doesn't have, um, which makes the book look thicker. And it also, I think they've added some chapters in that are just like basic Scientology things like what is personal integrity and just really basic things that are just like, I think they're in other books or whatever, or you, you come across them in other courses and they're just like, yeah, you know, not really interesting. But in this one, it's got like information that's just like, it's not in any other book. So it's actually interesting, the chapters. So they took out interesting chapters, right? Outrageous, right? Um, so that was a big thing. Now the second big thing is, I'll show you here, because I've got to show you specifics here so you believe me, right? Well, hold on. Let's just see how many pages there is. Let's see what the difference is in the pages. And also, speaking of the glossary definitions, in these original books, the the glossaries were better. I think they were more, they were better, simple definitions and stuff. And the new ones, the glossary. I don't think the glossaries are as good. Okay, so I'll just quickly see how many words there is. I mean, how many pages? So something like of actual writing text, it's 237 pages. And this one here of actual writing text is 275. But of course they put all the pictures in and stuff and they have blank pages like this. They have whole blank pages like that. See that picture is a waste of thing. And then here, it's just got a little tree or some shit. Like it's a tiny, it's just a waste of a page. Um, and they have a page like this where they put a quote in. Whereas in this one here, they don't put these silly little quotes in which you don't need. Oh, it's got a blank page. Okay, fair enough. It's got a blank page at the end of the chapter. Okay. And then, okay, another blank page. But it doesn't have, it doesn't put in picture thingos and it doesn't put in pages where it's got like a quote. Because it's just like, why do you need the little quote thing? You're going to read the chapter anyway. You know what I mean? It's got, you're going to read the chapter, you know, and it's just like, so when you're studying your basics, it just adds a little extra thing in to read that, you know, increases time when you're just like, I'm going to read the chapter anyway, because the quote's taken from the chapter. Okay, so here's a big screwing that went on in this book, right? And I got it here. It's on the chapter that says how to study, how to study a science. And this is the original by L. Ron Hubbard, right? How to study a science. Now, guess what they screwed it to in this new version? How to study Scientology, right? 
and I don't appreciate that change. Like, I don't think that's any good. Like, this is explaining how you study a science. So you can apply it to Scientology, you can apply it to physics or whatever, and see how it's good, how it can help you, like, at school and this sort of stuff. How to study a science. And it says, the whole subject of a science, as far as a student is concerned, is as good or bad in direct ratio to his knowledge of it. It is up to the student to find out how precise the tools are. He should, before he starts to discuss, criticize, or attempt to improve. Anyway, it's just information on how to study a science. Now, what? let's read what this opening thing is on how to study a science. Right? Here's the squirreling. Ready? Watch this. How to, firstly, how to study Scientology. And it's like... I think Hubbard's trying to teach people how to study like subjects and, and a science and stuff. I think they just changed it to Scientology and claimed that it was a dictation mistake. Bullshit. It says here, the first thing that a student has to find out for himself and then recognize is that he is dealing with precision tools. It isn't up to someone else to force this piece of information onto him. Okay, so with this one here, you'll see that it's, it doesn't have that. It just says the whole subject of the science as far as a student is concerned is as good or as bad in direct ratio. So they've added here, the first thing, and it starts here, they've added here an extra two sentences, right? Like, what the hell is the deal with that? See, these, all these old original books are more simple and basic. The glossaries are more simple and basic. They don't, they're not all wordy and, and crappy and stuff. And, but with these new ones, they add in these extra sentences. I don't know where they got these things from, but it says, the first thing the student has to find out for himself and then recognize is that he is dealing with precision tools. It isn't up to someone else to force this piece of information on him. It's just like, I don't know, I, I, I don't... There's other instances of this where they add sentences in, and I feel like they're not giving me more information, they're not, they're not good, and, it, and, it, and it's just, it's not LRH as well, so it's just scrolling. Like, I wonder where they got that sentence from. They come up with some sort of lie that it was... I don't know, I don't believe it's some, some transcriptionist, because... L. Ron Hubbard was around why all these books were being released, and if they were just full of problems like the way Miscavige implies that they are, Hubbard would have reprinted them while he was alive, like reorganized, and he would have had he would have had some event and said, "Look, there was all these dictation mistakes when he was alive." But he left these books in print for ages, and it was only until 2007 that suddenly this huge overhaul, and it's like. You know, it makes sense that they would do that because at that point they could get away with it because it's been so long since the book's been released and there's so many people have left Scientology that have been around as old-timers. So they could get away with doing some big change like that only years after Hubbard has passed away. And also, at that point, the copyrights have ran out, so they wanted to release the books again and they had to be changed in order to get the copyrights. That's apparently the law. Like, you can't just release the book exactly the same again you won't get copyright credit. So to get copyright credit again, you have to change the books. You actually, they have to be like new books. So that's how they, why they've had to do all these stupid things like pitches and pull chapters around and uh, change the titles of chapters. It's something as well, they change the titles. So in these books, some of them do have the same chapters, but they have different titles, names for those chapters. And it's just like, I don't know, it's no good. But so they're messing around with it to get copyright credit. Um, so there was that one, and, and I, like that how to study a science, and that being screwed, right? Because then, when you read this, how to study a science, you go, oh, I can apply that to my life. Whereas this, you go, how to study Scientology, oh, I can apply this just to Scientology. So it doesn't open up your life. And it also, this is a Div 6 book. So this is for people who are new to Scientology to help improve their life. So... Being how to study a science is more relevant to your life for these people who are new. You know what I mean? It's just, it's much better. And it's, they're screwing it by changing it. Okay, now here's the next big change, which is outrageous, right? You're going to love this. You're going to love this. This isn't just adding in two sentences that don't really add to the knowledge of it. This is like, this is really perverting it. Okay, so this is on the chapter how to live with children, right? And I'm going to read out... Here, I'm going to read out the original version because it's pure and it's simple to understand. Ready? Okay, hold on. Okay, ready? The main consideration in raising children is the problem of training them without breaking them. 
You want to raise your child in such a way that you don't have to control him, so that he will be in full possession of himself at all times. Upon that depends his good behavior, his health, his sanity. Children are not dogs. They can't be trained like dogs are trained. They are not controllable items. They are, and let's not overlook the point, men and women. A child is not a special species of animal distinct from man. A child is a man or a woman who has not obtained full growth. Okay. Good information makes sense. Ready for this one? The main consideration, this is the, the new version. The main consideration in raising children is the problem of training them without breaking them. The Jesuits had a system which is reported to have been workable, but the system perished with the Jesuits. Now you have to look up the word in the back, in the glossary, Jesuit. Whereas in this one, it didn't have that. Okay? So they've added some sentence in there. Now more. In contradistinction, the American Medical Association, an organization devoted to efforts to control the practices of doctors, so now you have to look up the word contradistinction and you have to look up the American Medical Association, if you don't really know what that is, which was probably in the, in the glossary, came out with a pamphlet, a masterpiece of nonsense, which was called How to Control Your Child. That's just what you don't want to do. You want to raise your child in such a way that you don't have to control him so that he will be in full possession of himself at all times. Upon that depends his good behavior, health, and sanity. So they've, they've added in a few sentences there that have things that you have to look up in the back of the book. Whereas this was simple and concise and good. Now, hold on, it goes on more. The good ex-barbers to the contrary, children are not dogs. Okay, so now you have to look up the good ex-barbers to the contrary. This one didn't have that. This one had children are not dogs. See how it's very simple? It reminds me of the 60s. Things were simple, practical, straightforward. Because society has gone wild since the 60s. It's gotten more complex and silly and, and just not straight, not practical, alpha male, direct, mathematical, logical. It's gone silly in this society. And this is what happened to the books. They've gone wild. I mean, school textbooks have gone degraded. Like, psychology textbooks have probably gone degraded. Physics textbooks have probably gone degraded because they go down the same path. People want to just issue them to make... Sorry, this, this, I know this exactly happened. Sorry, it's off topic. But I know because I've got a friend who's a math tutor and he tells me that literally they'll do that with the math books. They'll re-release them to get copyright credit and to sell the books again. Then they'll put some different pictures in and they'll change the chapters around. I'm not kidding because instead of just letting them have one book and then each kid using it every year and passing it down and selling it second hand, they change the books around and they release new editions every year or every two years and it forces kids to have to go buy them and then it keeps the people in the education department in a job because then, they, like, then they're making money f selling the books. How dodgy is that? That is what this society is like. It's outrageous, okay? It's just ridiculous. If you're teaching mathematics or physics or you're selling Scientology books, you leave the books the same. If they're correct and right, you leave them the same and you, you sell them. And if people sell them secondhand, okay, fine then. You can't make money from it. That's just how it is. But yet these dodgy people who want to make money from copyright credits and selling things. And it's just like, that's our university system. That's how dodgy it is. Another thing as well is these things here, these t-shirts, you can, you can make them real cheap in China and you can sell them in Australia. But do you know what they do with these school textbooks, these mathematic ones and these physics ones and other things? Guess what they have? They have protectionism. They have big tariffs so that teachers and these left-wingers at all these universities and stuff get kept in a job. So you can't just sell cheap imports of textbooks. You have to buy the local Melbourne mathematics textbook or something like that. It's just dodgy, whereas people who make t-shirts in Australia, they have to put up with these cheap Chinese export uh, imports or whatever, and they have to compete with them. It's like free market stuff. But of course, no, the left-wingers at university and teachers are protected and crap. So they can just change the books around, put in new pictures and, and, and change questions around and stuff so that they, they can just uh, make money from it. It's just outrageous. That's our society. This is what Hubbard and Scientology is trying to fight. 
and he's trying to improve in the world is this degradation of society so that you get subjects like this where people study Scientology and they don't really understand it and they're confused and they get subjects like mathematics where the quality of it is getting worse and students are actually getting dumber and this is actually true you can look up old versions like from the 80s and 70s of maths tests and you look at them today and the maths tests now are easier. Why are they easier? Because the universities want to sell more courses. They want to get more students studying the maths and completing it. And so they make it easier for them to pass. Because if they had it at the hard, older quality, older standard of mathematics back in the 60s, kids would fail and they wouldn't make their money and stuff and it would give the university a bad re reputation. So they actually, I'm not kidding, they actually make these university tests easier to pass Right, so that then they look great and they go, oh, we graduated 50 students this year or whatever, we made this much money and it was just great. And, and meanwhile, you don't, you don't really know the truth that the quality of the mass has just gone down the toilet. Outrageous. And it just, it's just an, a, a society going insane. And you've got men walking around thinking they're women, women and wanting to have unisex bathrooms. Like, it's just, it's wild. Anyway, so we've got here, like I said, this one here, children are not dogs. They can't be trained like dogs are trained. You got here, the good ex-barbers to the contrary, children are not dogs. They can't be trained like dogs are trained. Now, like, like I said, they've added in crap and they've added in things that you have to look up in the back. Now, here's where it gets really deep. I looked up the word ex-barbers in the back heaps of times. And, you know, maybe I'm not smart enough, but I couldn't make sense if you look up their definition of ex-barbers. So look how big that definition is. Look how big this thing is. You have to look that up. And a barber is one who cuts hair and shaves, trims beers. Ex-barbers is a reference to modern medical practices. And so you're sitting there as a, a student in the course room and you're going, oh my God, oh my God. And then I don't think that this sentence ever makes any sense. The good ex-barbers to the contrary, children are not dogs. I couldn't make any sense of this sentence. And then you find out the truth that this is really what Hubbard wrote. You know what I mean? This is the original. And there are many instances, because I studied a lot of these basic books when I was in the church, there's many instances where you hit sentences like this, the good ex barbers to the contrary. You hit sentences where you're like, huh? and then you look up in the back of the glossary and you're like, huh? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. and you, you, can, you, can, you can go at a good pace and be flying along and then you hit something and then suddenly the next 40 minutes, I'm not kidding, is stuck because you're like, I can't understand this. And then word clearers will come over and try and help you and then the student would bog down and then they think you're, you're doing squirreling or something because it's not working and then it's just like you're just in this confusion of blah 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 and it happens I guess it happens every every second study session I'm not kidding you'll hit something when you're studying these thingos where they've done like I don't know if they've I know that they've done it in this instance of squirreling but I felt like they've probably done if they've done it once they've probably done it more in these changes but you hit something where you're like, oh my god, and you just, you suddenly, you just bogged, you just, Bleh. you know what I mean, and you just, you just, because you just hit these things that don't make any sense. So there, I read it out for you. You can go find the old versions if you want, but this is clear squirreling. Okay, it's simple, it's nice, concise. You don't have to look up in the back. Whereas this, I read what was it, like 250 words or whatever, and I had to look up in the back like four times, and then one of those definitions never makes any sense. See how you can get bogged for 45 minutes? Whereas this, you didn't get bogged. Here you have fun, it makes sense, and you like Scientology, and Scientology is fun, and it's good. Here you don't like it, you know what I mean? And that's what makes me suspicious, they didn't just make the changes to um, get copyright credits and resell the books and try and get everyone to buy the books again. I think it goes deeper than that. I actually think it's an attempt to destroy Scientology. I think it's an attempt, because I know that they changed the OT levels in the early 80s and they made them new OT levels, and I feel like the people who control this world don't want smart, strong people. 
So it makes sense that they, uh, books and materials educate them. It makes sense that they will change them and put in confusing words to put people off wanting to study them so that they don't study them. And, and then if they do study them, they're in, they're in confusion and they're just like, eh, I don't really get it. But it dirties the whole subject of Scientology and that's why when I got through the basic, I, I nearly studied all the basic books but I, in the church and I studied like a fair few of them. But I got to a point where I was like, I'm not enjoying this or I'm just like, these aren't as good as what they're cracked up to be. And I was just like, hmm. And it's just like, you find out why because they're just full of, they're full of crap and they've been changed. So, that was me covering the changes in, in New Zealand on life. That's done. Now, um, let's go to this one here. This one here, uh, Science of Survival. Now, what changes have been in this? I mean, I'm sure it's the same sort of changes as the other ones, but one that I definitely know in this one is that they've moved whole chapters out of it. Like, big chapters have been removed. Uh, and it's like, why? I mean, I, I read this one, and I thought this was absolutely fantastic. I can't, I can't believe... I couldn't imagine how good the actual real one would be that wasn't squirreled. But if you look here, look how... Look how big the glossary is in this one. You know, it's another one where it's just like, whoa, massive glossary, right? Um, so with Science of Survival, um, I don't have the old version here to really compare um, and do a thorough one like I did on this one. But yeah, I know for sure, and you can look up the video with Ada Thomas in it, she goes into details that there's chunks of chapters have been removed. Um, from from the old version of Science of Survival. So this new one has been made smaller and had a huge glossary to compensate so you don't realise it. Okay, now with this one, amazingly, and it makes sense, the ethics book has had the opposite happen where all these chapters have been added to the ethics book. So it's been made a lot bigger. And the way this was originally was, um, was kind of like the New Slant on Life in that it was a concise cool little book that was good ethics information, good basic. But this one is like massive with this big glossary where you have to look up all these fancy words and it's got all this like data in it about ethics and just, just it's got way too much. Whereas before it was like this cool little ethics book that was simple and practical and stuff. And now this one, they just, they all just, they just put too much in this stuff. And I think it's, um, I think it overwhelms someone, you know what I mean? Like when you learn about the conditions, you just want to learn it, you know, this is what the conditions are. And that's, in the old version they are, they're just very simple. Whereas in this new one, they're like, you know, it's, just, it's like they've just crammed all this data in and someone who's like just a normal pu public Scientologist is just an overwhelm of data. Like, like if you're a, an ethics officer, it makes sense that you might want to in your office have a book with all the data on the conditions for example but for a marketable book and a book for just every Scientologist to have they've just put too much data in this and it confuses people and someone goes in ethics to write a uh, I don't know, KR or something and it, there's just too much stuff in here and just confuses you and it makes sense because the whole point of after Hubbard left and it's, well, it sort of happened was still around but things got really uh, strict in the church and really suppressive and ethics really grew in power so it makes sense that they would increase the book to all this crap in it and have too much. Um, but that's what they did with this book and again it's just like I'd just I'd rather go back to the old one you know much better. All right now here this one is one that the church, um, they aren't selling this anymore. Like they might still be selling it if they had ordered heaps years ago and never sold out of them. So they might still have them. They might even give you them for free actually, if you go into the church. I think I paid for this one though, but they're not really selling this one and they didn't reprint it. Um, and it's called, have, have You Lived Before This Life? And it goes into lots of past life phenomenon. And it's really funky. And again, it's a really cool book and it's not that fancy. It doesn't have a huge complex glossary and, and, and put you off. And it's just, um, it's just a good book with, with people talking about their past lives. And it's, it's quite funky because it gives you information, I guess, about the universe. And I've been looking into alien stuff and flying saucer stuff and it's hard to know what the truth is, but... 
you know, you hear about things like space stations and bases on Mars and funky things like that, and you come across some of this in this book. So if you're someone who really cares about the truth and wanting to find out what's going on, you go, oh, thanks Hubbard for releasing this book with interesting information about people's past lives, because that can help me find out the truth about this universe and find out if this whole flying saucer thing is true. Like this one here is talking about on another planet. Um, okay, like you don't know if it's true or not, because, okay, it's, it's memories in people's minds. Maybe it's made up, but it's just, it's good to know that this was in someone's mind and it came out in session and you can think with it and go, well, maybe this is true. And if you listen to people who reckon they get abducted by aliens, they say similar thing that back up this and you're like, oh, so maybe there is a base on Mars, you know what I mean? And you start thinking with it and it, it just helps you to find out the truth. And so it's a good book and it's cool as well. It gets you excited. But of course the church gets rid of it. And what do they, like they don't sell anymore. And what do they replace it with? They, in the basic books, they release like another book that I don't think ever existed before. And it's just a summary of Scientology information taken from all the other books. So it's information that you've already, already is out there. And it's not interesting. Whereas this doesn't exist anywhere. So it's interesting and you want this. So it's just squirreling. And it's, it's wrong that they're getting rid of a book like this. So, um, yeah, that's it for the, the KR. Um, you know, these are the tech changes that are staring you in the eyes and that are obvious. And there's stuff higher on OT levels that you don't know about. And there's stuff in the admin tech and sneaky little things. And there have been changes that aren't documented. These changes are documented. You can look, in the, look at the old ones and compare them. But, and I think they've actually, they've got records, I guess, of how they how they went from the old version book to the new version. But with, um, with there's, there's sneaky changes that the church has made, but, it, but it's just been little deletions and it's not been documented, so you can't even follow it. But, you know, if this is what they've done to the books, you, you know they've probably done things to other stuff as well. So it, it's wrong. Um, and I think what it makes you realize because if you try and if you if you actually sat down as a church member and investigated this and then sent reports up line you would end up just getting kicked out of Scientology like they won't try and correct their books or anything because upper management is corrupted by bad guys um, the SPs won I'm sorry to say it but the SPs won they took over the church they were sending in plants in the 70s they were trying to assassinate Hubbard they were trying to shut down and make Scientology illegal they're doing everything and eventually um, it worked. They ended up getting a hold of the church in the 80s and they ended up making it so they make money from it and they ended up shutting down the Scientology movement because it was a movement, but it's not a movement anymore. The Church of Scientology is not a movement anymore. It just accepts donations and it doesn't really clear the planet. It's not doing it. And uh, it's, it's just making money for the people who have taken it over and who are running it. And they're not even Scientologists, I don't think. What the evidence says. Um, and this is, this is what happens in this world because it's corrupt. And Hubbard wrote about this and Hubbard was trying to fight it. That's why he had sex, ch sex checks to try and not let plants come into the organ. That's why there, there's P PhDing, PDHing and stuff. Because... They were trying, and Captain Bill talks about this, they were trying to take out the church. And eventually, after years of doing it, they succeeded and they got in control of the upper management of the church. And they, that is RTC or CST or whatever. But they, of course, secretly took it over. And they didn't announce. And they're not going to say, hey, Scientologist, we've taken over your church from Elrond Hubbard. Of course, all the Scientologists are going to rebel and fight it. So what they do is, they take it over secretly, and over the years, they stop advertising Div 6, they change the books so they make more money, they accept donations, and they just receive the money from that, and they slowly keep on shutting it down to the point where the course rooms only have a few people in them, the whole movement's been shut down, um, it's no longer really standing up for what's right, and um, there, voila, the government's won, the bad guys have won, now, now they're happy, because now people aren't getting set free anymore. They didn't want people getting this sort of psychic abilities and there is remote viewing technology and stuff that's in the OT levels, you know. They don't want people having these abilities. They want, that they, they have to understand their philosophy towards life and it, it's basically they like people being slaves and they like to use them. 
They're enslavers, these people. So they don't like things to set people free. And, and the governments, any group that's a potential threat to them that might get bigger than them, even though the government's pretty damn huge and powerful, but if a group's starting up that's passionate, hardcore, and strong, they don't want that to get any bigger, so they squash it down. And they did, this, they did it with the Black Panther movement, and they did it with other um, sort of political things, and they did it with the Church of Scientology, and they successfully did it. And here's the evidence. Here's part of the evidence of how they did it. They're not true to Scientology. They're squirreling. So that's why I left the church. The evidence is there. You can just look for it yourself. Um, anyway, so, um, and David Miscavige just directly lies to you. I mentioned that as well. Because apparently I think they released the books again in 1991 with corrections in them. And now they did in 2007 again with corrections. So it's just an outrage. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'm Andy Nolch, the Space Cowboy. See you later.